Across the nation are sacred sites that capture the spirit of America's character. And one of those places is right here, the Kennedy Space Center. Every single vehicle that has carried humans beyond the bounds of low Earth orbit has undergone integration and testing in that vehicle assembly building, crawled down this roadway and launched right here from the Kennedy Space Center. The space launch system mated with the Orion spacecraft will continue this proud tradition. As soon as we roll out of the vehicle assembly building, High Bay 3, and the world gets a chance to see this rocket, I think, I think it is gonna be shocking. On March 17th, NASA took a giant step toward returning humanity to the moon. The fully assembled Space Launch System rocket and Orion spacecraft for the Artemis I mission made its debut outside the massive Vehicle Assembly Building. We've seen the mobile launcher outside and it's, it's massive, but now add an over 300 foot rocket on top of it, it's just gonna be amazing. Charlie Blackwell Thompson oversees the launch countdown, ultimately providing the go for launch. Entity, launch director, representing this team and all the men and women that have worked to make this day happen, I proudly give you a go to roll the Artemis launch vehicle to the pad. Ladies and gentlemen, the world's most powerful rocket right here. Once outside, the rocket began its nearly four mile journey to the pad riding atop a 6.6 million pound crawler transporter, which was originally constructed to transport the Apollo moon rocket. In one year, we have completely stacked the vehicle, We've completed most of our testing, all very successful, and we are so close to launch, and uh, I, it, the excitement is just crazy. Now, NASA's new moon rocket is making the same journey the Saturn V took 50 years ago. And just as all eyes are on the SLS tonight as it makes its journey, in a few short weeks, all eyes are going to be on the sky as it rocks the space coast and takes its maiden flight around the moon. It is amazing to see the culmination of all of this work of many years from many industries and many people that have come and go to have a chance to then now see their work going over to the pad and then launching to go to the moon. The rocket is rolling to historic Launch Complex 39B. It's launch pad used for both Apollo and shuttle launches, sending hundreds of astronauts to space throughout the decades, and now on tap to send hundreds more as we return to the moon and venture beyond to Mars. But for this mission, there will be no astronauts on board before the uncrewed Artemis I stack can launch to our nearest celestial body, it has to travel to the pad for a wet dress rehearsal, a test to run the rocket, capsule, launch team, and launch pad through their paces, simulating a launch countdown. When we get to the pad, the pad team will be connecting all the interfaces between the pad and the mobile launcher so that we can go ahead and start our operations at the pad. So at that point, the launch director really takes over and she will go down the sequence as if it was really a normal uh, launch date. Wet dress rehearsal is essentially launch without a launch. It is to really the reason we're doing it is to verify and validate all of the pieces that go into launch countdown. So wet dress is really our opportunity to find any issues or, or adjustments that we need to make in our launch countdown. For Artemis I, the wet dress rehearsal is the final and most critical test before the rocket can return to the launch pad for liftoff to the moon. During the countdown, over 730,000 gallons of supercooled liquid propellants will be loaded into the rocket as part of the nearly two-day launch countdown. We will configure all of the ground systems exactly the way we would for launch, and we will fully load uh, the core stage and uh, the interim cryopropulsion stage with, uh, with their liquid fuels. That'll be the first time that that's been done from here at Kennedy Space Center. There have been pieces of these things done in multiple different uh, areas. We've tested all of these systems in multiple different locations, but this will be the first time where we pull it all together 
into all of it all in the same progression that we've got um, laid out for launch countdown. Wet dress is the biggest milestone we have aside from launch because that means that the rocket is now put together has been tested separately and together, and it is ready to go and, and be filled with fuel to simulate how we're gonna do it at the pad, and then it tells us the rocket is ready to go for launch. And behind that wet dress rehearsal is a launch team made up of hundreds of engineers monitoring each system of the 320-foot-tall Artemis One rocket and capsule. Sitting in firing room one is the core launch control team monitoring hundreds of launch commit criteria to ensure the ground systems and flight hardware are ready for launch. Now you would think that launch control team in Fire Room 1 is, is it, that's all you need. We have a, a, an expansive support team across um, really the entire NASA enterprise that is supporting us on launch day. And that support spans the entire nation, from additional systems engineers sitting in Kennedy's Firing Room 2, to the flight control team at Johnson Space Center in Houston, to the contractors responsible for designing and building each segment of the rocket and capsule. This team is really shaping up to be a great, very skilled and ready to operate and execute launch for Artemis One. With the Artemis One launch team now fully certified and the wet dress rehearsal complete, SLS and Orion are ready for their final pit stop returning to the VAB before venturing back to launch pad 39B for liftoff. I mean, we are going and we're going together and we're having an opportunity to do this in a new generation of space exploration in which I can say that I'm honorably a part of. You know, you come every day to the VAB and you see the rocket and you can't believe what we have accomplished. People throughout history have always explored and, and you never know what you're gonna learn. Exploration is not always about the destination, but it's the path that you travel, the things you learn along the way. And the things we're gonna learn um, are, are going to be incredible. We can't even begin to, to understand what those are today. Our workforce has been a relentless spirit. We imagine, we build, we never stop pushing the envelope of what is possible.